Yeah. But as I, as, as I mentioned on the show yesterday, I recently had the chance to work with the USO, the, the, the nonprofit charity organization that helps support service members and their families. Earlier this year, I told them I, I wanted to help out. So they sent me to Thule Air Base, which is located at the northern end of Greenland, 750 miles above the Arctic Circle, because apparently they thought I'd be most helpful as far away from humanity as possible. <laughs> Turns out it's, it's absolutely fascinating up there. Thule is now under the command of the newest branch of the military, the U.S. Space Force. And I wanted to learn about their mission at the top of the world, so I headed north to meet with Chief Master Sergeant Roger A. Toberman. Join me now on the multi-part adventure we're calling... The Late Show presents... Red, White, and Greenland! Stephen Colbert is... Lost in Space Force! I traveled far above the Arctic Circle to Thule, Greenland. As I voyaged across the stunning, desolate landscape 2,500 miles away from home, I couldn't help but think, walking was a bad choice. Finally, I met up with the Chief Master Sergeant of the Space Force. Hey, Chief Toberman, there you are. <laughs> Hi. Hey, thanks so much. Yes, sir, how are you? Meeting me, uh, somewhere. I know your full title is Chief Master Sergeant of the United States Space Force, Roger A. Toberman, but in the interest of time, would it be okay if I just called you Chief Master Sergeant of the United States Space Force, Roger Toberman? <laughs> when did the concept of the Space Force begin? In 2001, the Rumsfeld Commission recommended to the Department of Defense that they consider standing up a Space Force. To 2001 was literally the beginning of your space odyssey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I guess so. mm -hmm. you seen that movie? I have. Do you have any idea what the end means? No. What the hell is going on with that space baby? I don't know. Do you guys have a space baby? No. No? No. Would, could you tell me if you guys did have a giant space baby? Probably not. Okay, so you have a space baby. <laughs> what is the significance of Thule Air Base? Why up here? Obviously, it made a lot of sense during the Cold War, but there's no more tensions with Russia at this point. <laughs> I think there still are some tensions. There's certainly... Uh, I don't really follow the news. What? I don't, I don't understand. <laughs> there's... Uh, and so we still have an important uh, mission to look north, and, and this is the northernmost base that we have. So you get a great... Anywhere in the world, this is as far north as the U.S. military has a base. Yes, it is. So um, what's interesting from a space perspective is that the same technology we use to detect uh, early warnings of missiles, we can also see objects in space, so we can use it for space awareness as well, and mm -hmm. so kind of uniquely situated up here. How much warning do you get if there was a missile launch? Enough to um, just panic, or would I have time to limber up so I could literally kiss my ass goodbye? So I believe we'll get enough to maybe keep you from having to say goodbye okay. at all. But if I tell you any more that, we might not be able to, so we'll just keep it at that level. I, I don't want you to tell me anything that could possibly endanger United States security unless it would be entertaining for people to hear. <laughs> I'm, I love space. I'm a huge fan of force. <laughs> what do you guys do? What does Space Force do? We ensure unfettered access to and freedom to maneuver in space. All right. Is there some fettering going on presently <laughs> that we don't know about? Like, is there, is there, a, is there a space war that we don't know about? There is not a space war that you don't know about. So. Space skirmish? Is there a space <laughs> skirmish we don't know about? Oh, that pause speaks <laughs> volumes. You're like, how much can I tell yes. this guy? Yes. Well, we, we know that there's been um, activity recently, right? And weapons are being tested by other nations. And it really should concern us that... Wait, we, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but yes. we know that? We know Meaning that. you know it or you know I know that. it? You know what that. do I know about what weapons are being tested in space? Is it the Ruskies? Are they up there shooting at our guy? Are they shooting at our satellites? Are no. they like... They're not? No. Are they ramming us? Is there any... Like, because seriously, those things are going up there at 17,500 miles yeah. an hour. Are they... Is it like, you know, doom, 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 ramming speed? <laughs> is, is it, you know... Is it galleon kind of uh, battles? No. There's so no, what are they doing? There's no battles. What there is is an increasing 
amount of activity. There's more stuff up there. Just two or three years ago, we were tracking uh, a little over 20,000 objects in orbit. About 1,500 of them were man-made. And now there's nearly 50,000 objects and 5,000 of them are man-made. So it's becoming very, very busy. Well, wait a second. If man didn't make the others, are you saying aliens made the others? <laughs> no, did they, you just let the cat out of the bag? No, no, the I did not. The cat has three There's eyes? There's no cat. There's no cat? <laughs> no. Uh -huh. It looks like a cat. It's not no. actually a cat. <laughs> no? No. You also uh, monitor submarine-launched missiles. True? Yes. Okay. Why do you have to monitor all of space and some of the ocean? Is the Navy just that lazy? <laughs> no. But they're like, hey, you guys, would you take some of the ocean? We are tuckered out. No, no, it's because of where the, the missiles, where they the don't missiles stay go. underwater. They, right, they go through. Sure, but the missiles that are in space eventually hit the land. It's not like the Army takes it from there. You guys are the Space Force. Yes. Seems like the Navy's trying to give you some of the stuff they don't want to do. And it's cool. There's nobody from the Navy here, right? It's just us chickens. You're the Space Force's top enlisted officer. OK. Uh, I'm going to ask you a question that I've asked multiple people at NASA. They've asked me to stop asking it. Oh, great. But I won't. <laughs> because it's important. What I'm going to ask you, and we're both adults, and I need you to answer this question straight. Are people doing it in space? I do not know. Don't you think it would be important for people to do it in space so we know what that's like to propagate the human species on other planets and perhaps repopulate the Earth in case anything happens while people are in space? For science. For science. Are people doing it in space for science? I don't know. You don't, you don't know? Mm -hmm. Got to imagine anything goes, right? Because it's no gravity. That's better than a waterbed, <laughs> right? Waterbed's impossible, by the way. That's for the Navy. You guys are in space. Find the zero G spot? No? This is when you're beginning to regret the interview. I apologize. You're a gentleman, and I shouldn't be doing this. Let's get back to the aliens for just one second here. <laughs> if you had to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with an alien, OK? Yeah. Let's just keep something basic. I'm not saying a Gorn, all right? I'm not saying a Klingon or yeah. a Kazinti. I'm just saying, like, uh, a, a, a gray, okay? OK? Willowy, Lithuanian basketball player, kind of lanky. Which uh, starship captain would you emulate in your fighting? Are you going Captain Kirk, Reboot Kirk, Picard, Janeway? <laughs> I'd, I'd probably go Han Solo. Wow. Very nice. So you just pew pew. He shot first. Why do space lasers go pew 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 pew? <laughs> Why do they make that sound? Pew pew. I don't know. By the way, um, if Han uh, was having sex in space, would he shoot first? <laughs> okay. That's a five star radar installation. Yes. I have heard that if I stand in front of that for like five minutes, it would boil the contents of my stomach. Is that true? <laughs> That's awfully graphic. It, it, would it cook me like a microwave? It. I wouldn't, yeah, I, I would not stand there. I've got interns <laughs> for college credit. We could have them wander in front of it. I don't think so. The theater majors. <laughs> it's not a big loss. <laughs> that thing detects ICBMs? Yes, sir. OK, I bet when it's 40 below out here, every BM you take is IC. <laughs> I came 5,000 miles to make that joke. That, that is fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. I think our work this, is done here. Let's go back to the States. <laughs> <laughs> I made a poop joke at the top of the world. When we come back, my epic Greenlandic saga continues. Stick around.